Can I ask Councillor Ambash to move and Councillor Speck to second the education funding motion in their name? I move. I, move. I second. Thank you. There is an amendment to this motion that has been circulated. Can I ask Councillor Mrs. Tracy to move and Councillor Dawson to second Thank the you. amendment? I formally move the motion. Uh, the amendment to the motion. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I formally second the Thank you. Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. Uh, in 2015, David Cameron said, with a Conservative government, the amount of money following your child into school will not be cut. In Treasury speak, flat cash per pupil. Sounds great, no cuts. What it actually means is that there will be no money to cover the increased costs that schools face. And he also said, that as the number of schools and pu uh, pupils going into schools is coming up, this means the uh, amount of money going into schools will do so as well. Again, sounds great, but all it means is that there is no increase in the amount per pupil going into schools. It's flatlining. Now, of course, David Cameron was always good at spinning a line, coming up with a quick fix without any regard to the disastrous consequences of his actions, as we've seen in, a, in the uh, Brexit era. Um, and you can always tell, actually, when the party opposite is rattled, because they start reaching for the word scaremongering. They seem to think that the figures that are being produced are scaremongering. This is not the case. If you go to the figures produced by the National Audit Office, right? no scaremongering body, a government body, in their 2016 report on the financial stability of sustainability of schools, you'll find this conclusion. The Department of Education's approach to managing the risk to schools' financial st stability cannot be judged to be effective or providing value for money. The Department of Education estimates that mainstream schools will have to find savings of £3 billion, 8% by 2019 to 20, to counteract cumulative cost pressures such as pay rises, higher employment contributions to national insurance and teachers' pension scheme. The department's overall school's budget is protected in real terms, but it does not provide for funding per pupil to increase in line with inflation. So there we are, back to Cameron's line. No cuts, but actually cuts. Actually three billion pounds worth of cuts. How did the audit office find that schools were planning to deal with this? Well, they said that they spoke to schools, and schools plan to cut staff costs in a range of ways, including replacing more experienced teachers with younger recruits and relying more on un unqualified staff. So this is part of the Conservative policy to uh, uh, cost-cutting measures disguised as liberalising the workforce. In the outer London borough where I work, schools are already making redundancies. In the inner London boroughs, there have been uh, attempts to make large numbers of redundancies which have been resisted strongly and avoided in many cases. But th those pressures will continue. The Institute of Fiscal Studies, not another scaremongering organisation, said this. Pupil spending is expected to fall by 6.5% between 2015 and 2020. This will be the first time schools have seen real terms cuts in spending per pupil since the 1990s. They note that growth was fast, 5% between 1998 and 2010. Education spending since 2010 has fallen 14% in real terms. The reason why these costs have uh, escalated on schools is government policy. Increase employers' contributions on pensions, increase on national insurance. We also heard uh, from Councillor Grimston about the shocking increase in business rates which schools in the local authority have been forced to pay. Selling Court School, for example, has to pay £29,000 per annum business rate, a rise of £13,000. There will be some, uh, some transitional funding, but as Councillor Grimston points out, transitional is transitional. London Councils, another organisation of which this council is a member, says that national funding formula for schools will result in £19 million pounds of funding being removed from London schools. So actually, the amendment you produce in itself is okay. But the problem is that it doesn't deal with the real problem because, as London Councils say, 
Taking this into account, as well as the increased cost pressures identified by the National Audit Office, London schools will need to make savings of £360 million in the first year of the new national funding formula. So actually the national funding formula is just the, a tiny tip of the iceberg of this disaster that we're heading towards in funding. That would mean 17,000 teaching assistant posts lost or 12,000 teacher posts lost. So we come to the actual website that uh, Councillor Govindia referred to as, as, as creating this scare. And we come with exactly the same figure produced by the Audit Commission itself. Three billion pounds being cut out of the education budget. The ones worth, that's 15 million, 612 pounds. The can, change... Can you conclude, please, right, uh, Councillor? I will, I will, Jones. indeed, I will conclude. The figures are exactly the same, based on exactly the same produced by the National Audit Office. It is not a scare story. It is something that will not go away unless you do something about it. We certainly agree with your point about the national funding formula. It's ill-conceived and wrong. But the far bigger problem is something that you are attempting to hide and attempting to ignore and pretending is a scare story. I'm sure we feel totally unsatisfied by what uh, was served up in the budget today. It was a typical Tory budget, a school's budget for the few but not the many. Councillor Mrs Tracy. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I will be as brief as possible, bearing in mind the hour. Um, the problem with uh, Councillor Gibbons' figures is that they are um, as a result of stage one of the consultation. Stage two is what we actually have a paper before us uh, tonight, and the situation and the money that is being distributed is very different at stage two. Um, the motion originally is flawed. That is not the money that the DfE are now talking about. Um, and at the end of the day, it is a consultation. The other issues Councillor Gibbons has um, brought up and addressed are nothing to do with the, f the national formula funding. Um, and the way that it should be distributed. We have lots of issues about um, the actual formula. The, we don't agree with the national formula. We actually think that the way that it's been devised is flawed as well. And I, I can, I mean, I'm sorry that my amendment looks so untidy. That's not how it was presented. But um, I can assure the uh, councillors that our submission will be very robust. We are also working on the submission that is being put in by London councils, which will be equally robust. Um, London has already got a, um, a, a bit of a, a transitional relief over its funding, but we will be pushing for more because we still, uh, whether the figure was 15 or whether it's, uh, my figure says it's just over two and a half, um, Two and a half is too much to be taken out of the London schools and we will be as robust as if it was 15, but the 15 figure is now wrong. Um, I'm very happy to share my response with uh, Councillor Ambash as soon as it is um, put together. It's going to the schools forum meeting on Monday for the head teachers to actually make their comments, so by Monday it will be more or less public knowledge. Um, but. Uh, uh, you must vote down their motion because it is inaccurate. And I have tried to keep the flavour of the motion in the amendment. Thank you. The matter now before the Council is the amendment moved by Councillor Tracy and seconded by Councillor Dawson on the funding of schools motion item 19. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against? So that's carried 29, the amendments carried 29.18. The amendments carried 29.18. Point of order, don't I get a chance to abstain, Mr. Mayor? I'm sorry? He's asking any abstentions. Any abstentions? So, uh, I don't, I don't know up. whose figures are right. I've got Just no one knowing, so I'm staying. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We'll record that. So thank we you. Now have the, um, and so one. The, 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 now the substantive motion. It's now for the council's substantive motion. 
The matter now before the Council is the, the substantive motion as amended. As amended. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Those in favour? Want to take a vote? Do you want a recorded vote, is he saying? Or? Do you want a recorded vote? Just a, just a vote against. So, okay. okay, so we're voting on A. On A. Okay, but those in favour of A. Those in favour of A. A1. 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 Those in favour of A1, please. Show of hands. Against. Those against? One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's carried 30. That's any abstentions? Uh, any abstentions? Uh -huh. One. Thank you. So that's Thank carried 32. Carried 32, 17. And on A little 2 and B, A little 2 and B? On A little 2 and B. And that's we the have a, that's, a, that's the remainder. That's the remainder of the motion. The remainder of the motion. Those in favour? Uh, was that agreed? Is so that is agreed? Is agreed, thank you. Thank you. I don't think that's it. Can we move on?